Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise As the praise Sabbath the day, we are excited. We are excited. We are excited. We are excited. The Lord has blessed us to come to another state meeting. Amen. And we got two dynamic teachers today for our adult Sabbath school class. And we are excited today. Amen. Thank God for our um, other two classes. They were great classes. So now we are looking Father, to having a blessed time in Sabbath school this morning. This morning, we are um, excited to have our the national Sabbath school superintendent, Brother Hurst, with us this morning. He's going to be our teacher along with our Deacon Preston. So you know we're in for a treat this morning. So we encourage you to participate, you know. Put your questions in the chat room. Be active, ask your question, make your comments. This is Sabbath school, amen? So today we are going to say thank God for our teachers, and at this time we're going to turn the service into the hands of our brother Hurts and our deacon Preston. Amen, God bless you. Uh, brother Hurst, are you out there? Yes, sir. I'm here. All right. Well, um, first of all, I always like to say this. Thank you for taking the time to join us in Sabbath School. You have a decision that you can make every Sabbath on who you want to engage with. And we are certainly grateful that you are you made a decision to engage with us in Sabbath School. I'm like our evangelist tab. I don't know how much teaching I'm going to do. I'm actually just going to try and facilitate the conversation uh, with our National Sabbath School Superintendent, our brother Joshua Hurst. Uh, he writes so many of our lessons. And uh, on behalf of myself and just the House of God in general, Brother Hurst, we thank you for everything that you do. Um, we are excited for this Sabbath School. Uh, for those of you who did not uh, get to see service last night, the woman of God, brought for the word of God, amen. Our elect lady, Louise Thornton, preached a mighty word. And so we are definitely feasting on that word and we're excited about our time today. Uh, me and Brother Hurst have never facilitated together or taught together, so you're gonna get to see our nuances together as we go into this Sabbath school lesson. So I want us to think about this. Uh, our lesson, and I believe, Brother Hurst, you're actually the writer of this lesson. And so, again, we get to get your perspective. And the lesson is servant unto all. And as we think about this lesson, what, what I want us to be mindful of is uh, the everyday application question that our brother Herbert challenges us with is, how are you actively demonstrating servanthood in your life? So, Brother Hurst, if you're okay with it, I'm going to read the Sabbath school lesson, and then we're just going to jump into um, going through the scriptures that you want us to go through, and then you and I will continue to just have some conversation around uh, the scriptures that we're going to focus on. But before we do that, I don't know how many of our saints actually know you, so would you take the time just to introduce yourself to us as we actually engage in Sabbath school? Brother Hurst. Amen. Happy Sabbath, Saints. I'm glad to be here. It's an honor to be here. We honor the Lord today on his holy Sabbath day. Amen. We're happy and excited about Sabbath school. I really enjoy the format that uh, Deacon Preston and Apostle Raglan use and, and uh, Cobb Ham and their joint teaching together. It keeps it exciting. It keeps it live. But we're just glad to be here. So we're looking forward to, to sharing the word of God together with you. And, and my uh, co-host, Deacon Preston, you always do an outstanding job. We're just honored to be a servant in the house of God. Amen. The grand old house of God. To be called a servant, feel free to uh, put it in the chat. Or, you know, I can think of one that we always refer to. It, they, some say, he, I'll give you a hint, it may be the oldest book in the Bible. Uh, you know. I think I have a reason. Okay, yeah, that's, that's a good one, amen. Anybody else? Isaiah. Isaiah, that's a good one. Um, how about the one that the Lord asked Satan about? Job. 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 Amen. He said, has thou considered my servant Job? Amen. Um, anybody else? Uh, so another question who 
who is referred to themselves as the Lord's servant besides Abraham and David? Abraham in Genesis 18 referred to himself as, as the Lord's servant. And David referred to himself in the Psalms and others as the Lord's servant. And so they were proud to be known as the servants of God. Amen. It's not a negative term. Amen. It's a positive term. Uh, I like Psalm 116 and 16. It says, O oh Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thine handmaid, for thou hast loosed my bond. So, you know, what are some attributes of servants? Humility. Anybody? Humility. Humility. Yes, yes ma'am. <laughs> I can't get it yet. Trustworthy. What are the last things looking right now? That's a very good one. Uh, Trustworthy. Absolutely. So <laughs> Obedience. I didn't hear that one. Servants represent the master. Yes, sir. Service to represent the master. And I think when we look at Paul, that's really what we're going to see. Paul's heart was service to represent the master. He never wanted to misrepresent the gospel or to, uh, you know, give people the wrong impression of Christ. Anybody else? I would say uh, persistent. Persistent. All right. Persistent, persistent and patient. Um, okay. Sorry, go ahead. I thought you were Minister talking. Minister go ahead. Good to hear from you. Yeah, I would say you persistent just because uh, sometimes it, as a servant, as, especially those that work in the church, you know, uh, sometimes you just got to continue to do the work despite circumstances, First despite, um, First you know, things that may come against it. You got to be patient because uh, everything's not going to always go your way as well and still continue to continue to serve. Look at Paul, you know, he was serving from jail. I'm sure that wasn't what he planned. You can just. Right. He was serving from jail for no reason at all, right? That's right. That's right. Very good. They're duty driven as well. All right. Duty driven. Can you define that? Your Elaborate a little more on that. Obedience. Well, they know that there is a task at hand and they're driven to do that task. Okay, I agree. Anybody else? And, and we look, we're looking forward to hearing from Deacon Preston and, uh, and Pastor Raglan as well. They do such a dynamic job when they teach together. Amen. Uh, Brother John, we've got, a, we've got a lot of comments, and I just want to throw these out here around servant. Just to, in the in the chat, we've got people: uh, evangelist furlough, submissive, willing, obedient. Our prophet Karen Richardson, she talks about a servant loves. Our Saint Margaret says they follow direction. Uh, Brother Jones says kindness. Deacon Raglan says they're resilient. Uh, uh, Sister Myra says they abandoned their ego for the completion of the mission. So got a lot of people who've shared their attributes. Uh, St. Sharon Miles Benton just said they are insightful. Sister Furlo says seek to please the master or hire of them. So some great attributions of servants. Amen. Those are wonderful. You know, a few of those stuck out, and I, I can't recall all, but a few of them as a loving, a labor of love. As a labor of love. We, we have a labor of love. A labor of love. And a labor of love. I hope you're discouraged. I got some feedback there. I got some feedback there. And, and my husband and brother Miller said, Like John, I was like John the Baptist, who was a front runner for the younger cousin. That's where your feedback. Who was the Messiah? Okay, he was a front runner. Okay. That's, that's, that's their feedback. That's their. That's their. That's their. I don't think the feedback. I don't think the feedback. Let me just say, if you uh, if you're not speaking, that's put your device on mute. I think that might help a little bit. Yeah, I knew, and I muted them too. 
All right, we'll see if it's any better. Okay, I think it's much better now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so persistent and love. I, I really just kind of want to touch on those as it relates to God. You know, we have to, in our servanthood to him, we have to love him. This is a labor of love. Amen. If you love me, keep my commandments. And although the Lord doesn't do what we want him to all the time, we still love him enough to stick with him. Amen. To be persistent Amen. and to trust him that he's in control. So it's this humbling ourselves under the hand of God. Amen. And I think Jesus exhibited the best example of that. And we're going to look at that in Philippians 2, but all these are good definitions. Amen. And I say, somebody touched on being a servant in the church. Minister West mentioned that. And I say, I hope that your servanthood in the church is a labor of love. Amen. We got to love the church because this is the Lord's church. We don't always agree what he, what the church does. We don't always, uh, agree with what decisions are made, but as long as the church is following the scriptures, as long as we're serving Christ, you should love the church, amen? Love the church to not walk away from it in hard times, amen? And that's why I'm here in, in this church and amongst the fellow saints because I love the church and the church has taught me the word of God. It's taught me about the feast days. It's taught me about the Sabbath, amen? And this fellowship is strong, amen? So. Amen. As servants, we, we work from a place of love, amen. Anybody else got any comments or, or questions that we missed? I just wanted to add, um, Brother Hurst, not about that, but from a technical standpoint, if you're in a household that have two devices, <laughs> um, you use multiple devices, please make sure that you have them muted because if you got two devices on, it's going to create a feedback. Amen. All right, so we, our memory verse, we read it. This is what Paul said. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. So Paul, was, he wasn't indebted or he wasn't obligated in a sense. He was free, but he chose to make himself a servant to all. And what was his purpose? His purpose was to gain the more, to win others to Jesus Christ. And that's our goal in the gospel is to win others to Christ, to share the love of God. Amen. Uh, so Paul is a servant. We, 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 23 is the primary scripture in the lesson, uh, first part of the lesson. So verses 1, I always like to touch on the context, and Deacon Preston does a great job of, of putting things in context. Um, we don't want to isolate things to try to make a doctrine. But verse 1 through 18 deals with Paul's authority as, a, as an apostle. And he talks about what they could do uh, as apostles, the authority they have. He says, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Um, he says, if others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? So he could have done this, but Paul says, nevertheless, we have not used this power, but set up for all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. So. Paul was willing to not take of their carnal things, he himself being a tent maker, because he didn't want to hinder the gospel of Christ. And he said, what is my reward as an apostle? For the work I've done, what is my reward? My reward is that when I preach the gospel, mm -hmm. I may make the gospel of Christ without charge. Amen, that he abuses not his power to gospel. So that was his goal, was to not bring shame upon the gospel. He, he wanted so bad for people to be saved he made himself a servant unto all um, just a, a great example of a servant and so we can read those scriptures uh if we get if we get a volunteer we'll just go through 19 through 23 if that's okay and then we want to have some uh conversations surrounding that so brother Hirsch, you want first corinthians chapter 9 19 through 23 yes sir Got it. I will read that for you. First Corinthians uh, chapter 9, 19 through 23. And it reads as follows. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews, I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law of Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. 
to the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. And I made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Thank you, Dick and Preston. So I like to use this when I study the scriptures, the Bible interprets itself. Amen. I can use these outside study tools and they're great. We use the strongest dictionary. We use word studies, but the Bible will define itself. So oftentimes the apostles quoted from the old Testament in the new Testament, they use the Bible to teach others about the Bible. And we're privileged in this day in that we have the entirety of the scriptures readily at hand. So Paul said he became as a Jew. So let's look at an example of that. Just briefly, we're going to go through this and take examples of where Paul became as a Jew, where he became to those as under the law, as without the law, as we can just touch just briefly on those. How? So Acts 13, and I'll read a few examples here. Acts 13 was in Antioch, and it says, I'll give you a second to get there. Acts 13 and 13. So he's relating to the Jews, and there's many examples where Paul preached to the Jews. Uh, it says, now Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, and they came to Pergia, Perga and Pamphylia. And John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. And when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch and Poseida, or Poseida, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And so they did this orderly as they should and after reading of the law and the prophets the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them saying you men and brethren if ye have any word of exhortation for the people say on then paul stood up beckoning with his hand men of israel ye that fear god give audience so he went in on the sabbath day the day that they were gathered in the synagogue in an orderly fashion and preached christ now, we know the great persecution he suffered for it, but he became as the Jews. So he did met them where they were, if you will. Um, and then, so how did he meet those that considered themselves or that were trying to make themselves as under the law? You can read, we're not going to go through the whole thing, but there, in Galatians chapter 3, there were those men that had come and taught them that they had to be, had to keep the entire law to be justified. The antinomians they wanted the church of galatia to come subject to the entire law in order to be justified and they said that if you didn't you couldn't be saved but paul corrected that those that had put themselves under the law because they had broken the law and were seeking justification through the law so therefore they were under the law he said no look he said god preached the gospel to abraham before you know that christ is the means of justification looking at I'm sorry, Galatians chapter 3. So he became to those that were under the law. He met them where they were and their understanding, and he corrected them. And he said, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being written, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith so he's saying you know those that think they're under the law they've already broken the law they're under the curse for breaking it you can't be saved because you broke it you got to go through christ that's the only way you receive the spirit through christ so he related to them and met them where they were if you will so how about those that are, that are without the law if you look at acts 17 it was at athens at mars hill paul went to them he said, look, you got this uh, graven image. This, I'm going to declare to you the unknown God. You're without the law. You don't even know really the law of God. I'm going to declare him to you. Uh, so how did he become to the weak? In 1 Corinthians 8, it was relating to those that uh, were offended by eating meat offered to idols. He said, look, there's, you know, idols are nothing but we don't want to offend our weak brethren by eating this meat that's offered to idols we don't want to cause them to stumble to turn away from christ by the things we do so he was related he became as the weak and then he said i've become all things to all men and why is that why did he do that he may gain anybody so when some yeah all right 
That's right. He, he did it because his heart was to win people to Jesus, to share the love of Christ. They meant to be a servant. He met them where they were. And you know what? He went through great persecution in the midst of proclaiming the gospel, but he never turned away from his servanthood. Even when God said, look, I'm not going to deliver you from that thorn in the flesh. He still continued to, to serve Christ, to proclaim the truth, to share the love of God. You know, great was the persecution of Paul, but he did it all as a servant. Amen. Anybody, come, we're going to open it up for comments, questions. You got a hand. Yes, I have a question. Go ahead. Sister Charmaine, Sister Charmaine go ahead. Yes, good morning um, to the Sabbath school, to Apostle James and to the yes. teachers. Um, Okay, so my question is, as I look at him being a servant, how did he obtain such a relationship? He met he Christ? Um, so, uh, uh, Paul. Oh, okay. How did, he, how did he get there to be all things? So, let me make sure I'm understanding. Um, him being all things... Okay, so when we read the scripture, him becoming all things to draw souls to Jesus. That that's the understanding that I um, that I was hearing you say through that scripture, and when I read it. So it, my question is, how did he get such a relationship that he could be in that place, or is that only just for preachers, apostles, uh, ministers? Brother Hersh, I'd like to take that. <laughs> okay, this is the thing. But he, he grew into it, but it started on his Damascus Road experience. And you understand what I'm saying? We have to recognize that um, our journey gets us there. Our walk with God gets us there. He is without respect to person. Anybody who will submit themselves to the Lord, willing to be obedient, um, and, and do his will can have the same relationship. Now, whatever their calling is, that God's going to work on them. She's going to work on them according to their to their calling. So, it's, it, no, it's not particular to ministers or to or to bishops or or pastors or anybody. It is for anyone that will open up to the Lord, right? Anyone that will say, "I yield to be a servant," then whatever uh, whatever you are needed in the body of Christ, that's what you're going to get. Amen. Amen. And before I make my statement, did they ask your question, Sister Shabbat? Yes, yeah, so you're, you're, what I'm hearing you say, it's a journey, and each of us, he's going to work on us through that journey where we will land at that place that we too become servants for him. But it's a process. That's what I'm hearing you yes, say. That's exactly what we're saying. Yeah. Now, my, my point, um, Brother Hurst and Deacon Preston, when I look at um, verse 21, 1 Corinthians 9 and 21, as the house of God, as commandment keepers, this is where we get hung up. <laughs> Why do you say that? Why do you uh, say that's where we get hung up? This is where we get hung up. Second word is saying, to them that are without law. Okay. All right? We are, we, we're commandment keepers. We are law keepers. Mm -hmm. But it said to them, that are without law, as without, um, uh, he said, as without law, being not without law, but under the law of Christ. See, what he said, I become all things to all men. Right. He talked about those who, um, and you would give an example when he went to the synagogue, uh, Brother Hurst, and on the Sabbath, now he's saying, for those who don't know nothing, who knows nothing about the Sabbath, those who don't know anything about the Ten Commandments, he said, but to them, I become as without law. And, and that, is the, that is the piece that I see so many times we can't gain souls because we get hung up on law. Mm. So, and so that, I'm, what he said, he said not being without law. He said, I'm not without the law, but to those who don't have it, I come to them in a way they can understand. I come to them in a way that they're going to be able to relate to me that I can show them uh, that the law has not been done away with, but Jesus came and fulfilled it. 
Amen. Apostle, I love that point, and, and I, got, I see a, a hand, but I want to bring up a point that our Deacon Ragman brings. He talks about empathy is needed to become all things to all men. Right. And I think that's a great point that he brings out because empathy is really saying I can put myself in someone else's shoes, but it does not mean that I'm going to compromise uh, and, and go into sin to draw somebody. Amen. What it is saying is I will meet them where they are. And so um, OJ says this, Paul was also very intentional with his audience. He also found common ground to be able to preach the gospel. Look how he related to the men in Athens, and that's something that our brother Hurst brought up. Sister Furlow says our pride and haughtiness can sometimes prevent us from being able to relate to others who are not in the church. I see Sister Simone Adams has a question we want to get her, then we're going to get it back to Brother Hurst because I've got a question of clarity that I would like for him to answer for us. So, uh, Sister Simone, go right ahead. Hey Amen. Happy Sabbath to everyone. You actually answered it for me um, when you gave your comment, right? Because I have heard it taught in the church that, you know, um, that the scripture about becoming all things to all men. Um, and I've heard it said that, you know, even if I have to do thus and so, which would actually be disobedience, uh, something in disobedience to God, right? But you answered that, right? We, we do not um, let go of our relationship with the Almighty. We do not disobey God in order to become uh, that's not what the scripture is telling us. It's not telling us that we are to disobey God, amen, but we are to be able to, by the spirit of God, look and see the situation that we are in and who it is that we are talking to, amen, and the Holy Ghost will give you the what to say. It'll give you what to say, when to say, and also how to say it, amen, but we have to be, uh, we have to be listening to the Almighty. We can't be in ourselves. We can't put what we do uh, above it. And really, you know, we do what we do because we love God. This is not about we are just law keepers. Amen? We do what we do, what we should. You do it because you love God. Amen. And if, Amen. This isn't about I'm a law keeper. Hallelujah. I do what I do because I love the Almighty and I want to please Him. Amen? But I, that was the clarity that I was waiting to hear about the scripture because again, I have heard, I've heard it taught and I've heard it taught uh, in the church and we do, we need to get clarity on that and let people know. This is not a scripture that says to you that you can go ahead and sin mm -hmm. and you can go ahead and do whatever you wanna do in order for you to draw people, mm -hmm. amen, because you have to be careful when you open up that door to darkness, um, darkness is out to overtake you, mm -hmm. praise mm -hmm. God. It's out to overtake you. So if you're not careful, that's what it'll do. But thank you very much. No, I, I appreciate that. And I always go back to 1 Corinthians, I think, 9, 27, where Paul says, but I keep my body and bring it into subjection, least that by any means, when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. And so the reality is Paul is saying, I don't want to preach the gospel and, and, and talk about the standard and then live a life where I would actually get disqualified for not keeping the standard. So glad we were able to answer that question. I see another question from our Deacon Rodney Ragland. We want to take that. And then we want to hear our uh, Bishop Palmer's voice. We want to give him time to chime into the lesson as well. Deacon Ragland, and then we'll take it to our Bishop Palmer. Hey, thanks, uh, Deacon Preston. So I, I want to I tie in a couple uh, scriptures that our brother Hurst uh, raised this morning. So back in one of the other scriptures, we were talking about um, the event where uh, Peter was having a conversation with Christ about washing his feet. And Christ said, if you don't wash my feet, you won't have any part with me, right? So and I, I, I translated that and interpreted that as to you will not be sharing with me. Right? And so then we come forward to 1 Corinthians 9 and 23, and this whole concept of sharing comes up again. It says, I do not, I do it all for the sake of the gospel that I might share with them in its blessings. So I wonder if, if someone here uh, maybe can elaborate on the connection of the relationship between serving and being able to share in the blessings or the benefits of the leader. 
I mean, so I, I just want to make sure I heard the questions you were asking, making the connection between servanthood and sharing in the blessing. Is that correct, or did I miss anything there? No, that's spot on, Deacon Preston. Okay, and so I want to open that up to our, our brother Hurst and then to our Bishop Palmer in, in, in giving some insight into what our Deacon Ragland just asked. So we think about it, and we haven't read John 13 yet, hopefully we'll get to that, is that uh, Peter says, you know, I don't, <laughs> you got to wash my whole body. <laughs> and but Jesus said, you know, if, if I don't do this, you won't have a part with me. So how do we connect that? And, and I'll go to Bishop Palmer first and then back to Brother Hurst. Any thoughts or insights you want to share, Bishop Palmer, on that question? Um, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Stand by. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, uh, let me get the question again because I was somewhere place someplace else, but let me get the question again, make sure I can answer correctly. All right, you got it. All right, so Deacon Ragland, I want to make sure I'm going to ask you to come off mute and ask that question one more time so we can hear from our Bishop Palmer. Sure. So, so Bishop Palmer, I, I was just asking the question as we read through, I know we haven't read 1 Corinthians 13. Um, but in, in 1 Corinthians 9 and 23, this idea of sharing in the blessings, right, of, of our God as part of our servanthood. And so I wanted to just get some thoughts on the connection between our servanthood to God and sharing in his blessings. Amen. Yes. Um, well, my uh, input on that. It's connecting the two, um, first of all, because we have been brought into the body of Christ, and he has um, called us in for his purpose, and we're, because he's called us into um, the body and for his purpose, as a servant, we receive the blessing, number one, by being in the body of Christ, by being mm -hmm. saved. That's, that's the first blessing that we receive that we have now received eternal life. So when it comes down to um, uh, our serving to, we are, we are commanded to share this gospel. We are inspired by him. It's not just our story, our testimony, but it's about his story. So the things that we experience in Christ, being in the body, body of Christ, it brings us to a place where we are influenced by the Spirit of God to tell of his goodness, as our, our lady Thorne preached last night, to make known his deep. This is the blessing. This is the connection that not a materialistic thing. We're going to get that anyhow. But the spiritual blessing is that we can share with someone, as the Apostle Paul did, um, throughout his life. He gave his testimony. He shared it over and over again. And the power was in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I don't know if we, sometimes we might not remember or might not understand that the power of God um, that's in the gospel, it is the righteousness that's in the gospel, the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's why it was essential to preach Christ that men and women would come into the righteousness of God, which is Jesus Christ. So the connection of the, of the blessings and the ser servitude, we have been um, called to do those good works. So that's what we do. That's where I think the connection come in for our servitude, you know, being in Christ and understanding our purpose. For someone not knowing your purpose and, and might not understand why you're here, Christ um, bringing us in brings us to a new light of things, our purpose for being in Christ and for living, and that is to serve Christ uh, with our all in all. Thank you. Amen. Um, I love that point. Uh, Bishop Paul, I guess my question back to you to, to continue to expound on that is just be, if, if I'm a servant and the servant shares a serves into the blessing because of what they're doing with the master or they're in this relationship, servanthood doesn't mean I'm not going to suffer. Servanthood doesn't mean that I'm not going to go through. Because when we think about that, and we think about the disciples when Jesus says, 
um, that, you know, we're in this relationship, all of them except John gets martyred, and they lose their life for the gospel. What, one of the things I think you brought out, which I think is a good point, when we come to Christ, one of the greatest things we share in is that we have salvation in Jesus Christ. We have relationship with Jesus Christ. We actually, when we come in, we have eternal life and a right to the tree of life through Jesus Christ. So that is what, that's the greatest blessing, I believe, that we can get when we come into fellowship with Christ and he shares that blessing with us. So, Bishop Palmer, appreciate that perspective. Brother Hurst, is there anything else you want to add um, as far as Deacon Ragland's question, think, I think that was a great question. Thank you, Deacon Preston. I think it was a great answer by our uh, Bishop Palmer. Uh, great job. And, and, you know, the blessings that we reap from being the servants of God are endless. You know, you think about the peace that passes all understanding. You know, the, and what we, in Psalm 116, we read it. He said, I am thy servant. I am thy servant. Thou hast loosed my bonds. You know, and, and it's just never ending. Sure, we have persecution. Paul had persecution greater than we can ever understand. But he continued to serve. He continued to reap the blessings. He, he said, whatsoever stayed on in, I've learned to be content. You know, I trust the Lord. And he was. He came to the end. He, he was ready. I, he said, I fought the good fight. I finished my course. Yeah. I'm ready. And that's the thing we got to stay focused on, is that we're willing to humble ourselves and be servants and be scorned, if you will, if we need to, in the world's eyes. And so, as so many that have gone on before us, you think about John Huss, you think about those that were burned at stake, those that were laughed at, those that were humiliated for being the servants of Christ, but they had a far greater reward, you know, to, to receive the crown, to, to walk in the new heavens and the new earth. That's our focus. But right here and now, there are blessings that are many, and, it's, and, and the world don't understand it. That's okay. That's all right. But being the servant of Christ is the greatest thing that happened to me. And I'm sure many of you can say it's the greatest thing that ever happened to you. Amen. Amen. I love that point. Uh, Apostle Ragland, do you have your hand up? I see. Is that your hand? Go yes. ahead. Go ahead, Apostle. And I just wanted to add, um, I think, um, I mean, Deacon Rodney, for the question about blessings, because this is the thing. People have to attribute blessings to be material things. Mm. And, and one of the richest men uh, in the scriptures that suffered yeah. was, and um, uh, Brother Hirsch brought it up earlier, Ooh. Job. Yeah. Job's blessing was yeah. not so much yeah. his um, his material things. Job had so much, yeah. but Job's blessing was his relationship. Yeah. That's yeah. the blessing that we want people to, yeah. to, to get and to gain and to have a relationship with Christ. It was Job's blessing. Job was so blessed. His, his relationship was so great that the Lord said uh, to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? And then when Job's wife uh, said to him, when she see him suffering, she said, you are just curse God and die. And his reply was, you talk like a foolish woman. I am so blessed to be in relationship with God. Why would I want to curse him and die? Yes, I'm going through. Yes, I'm suffering, but I'm still blessed. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Apostle, I love that point. One of the comments, uh, the relationship is the blessing. So when we have relationship, that is the blessing that we have. I see our minister, Alan, she put in Matthew 28, 19, and 20. I want to read that, and then I want to get it back to our brother Hurst and have him direct us on where he wants us to go. But if you've got your Bibles, go to Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20, and it reads as follows. It says, uh, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. And then he says, amen. So he is with us even to the end of the world. I think when we think about it, think about what that scripture says. No matter what we're going through, we're never alone. And to me, that is one of the greatest blessings that we can ever have. So I want us to do this. We're going to get into Brother Hurst. Then I'll brother, just say this before you go. Yeah, go. In that scripture, yes, sir. we can't get people to see the blessing because we get hung up on the baptism. I'm going to leave it right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going 
gonna leave that alone and pause so I'm gonna leave that one alone. <laughs> All right. Um, I want us to think about this as we jump to our next scripture. Um, Brother Hurst, in his everyday application, because we think about this, we're hearing a lot of word today, we're reading scripture. I want to thank uh, our Brother Hurst for what he did, how he broke down when we went to 1 Corinthians. He talked about Paul becoming all things to all men. Then he re related it back to specific scriptures. I think that was beautiful on how you were able to connect that. As we think about this application, the application question was this. How are you actively demonstrating servanthood in your life? Mm -hmm. And so when we think about the important part, we think about Sabbath school is when I walk away from Sabbath school, how am I applying what I heard today to my everyday life? And so we want us to be mindful when we close out the Sabbath school, we're going to ask you to engage with us on give us an example on how you're going to move forward in actively demonstrating servanthood in your life. So, Brother Hurst, you take us where you want us to go with the next scripture, and we will dig into God's word. We do have a question uh, from Sister Joan Christmas. She says, how do we get past a physical need in order for the person to see the spiritual blessing? So, that, here's the question on the floor. How do we get past a physical need in order for the person to see the spiritual blessing. Simply put, take care of the spiritual need. Jesus fed the multitude. Mm -hmm. the he physical, fed the multitude. So that's what, whatever we can do for the physical person, do that. Now we gotta be wise. Sometimes people just pull on you for the physical, uh, that physical need, but the physical need should be met with purpose. Okay, so that there's a, per need. a physical need Take care of the physical need if you can, and then work with the uh, spiritual part. All right. Love that. Love that, Apostle. Thank you for that. Sister Joan, hopefully that answered your question. I want to get it back into the hands of our brother Hurst. You take us where you want to go, brother Hurst. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Deacon Preston. I love how you include everybody and how everybody's comments you share, uh, the questions and everything in, in the Sabbath school. It's wonderful. And I agree with Apostle Raglan that we got to meet the physical needs of people. If they're hungry, you know, we got to give them some food. If they need some clothes, we got to give them some clothes. And he's right. We do it in wisdom. Amen. We're, we're not taking advantage of, but it is our duty to meet people and, and supply their physical needs. And then we can reach them with the gospel of Christ. Uh, I love what's been said so far, the comments and participation. You know, we looked at Paul as an example of a servant. Um, and, and we're going to move on to, to Jesus. But I just want to make a few comments where some people have touched on the fact. I had in my PowerPoint the question, did Paul compromise to meet to become all things to all people? Did he compromise righteousness? And I think that was answered in the comments. I read some of the chat. No, he never compromised righteousness. And Sister Adams touched on it as well. You know, we can't go to the bar and have a drink with somebody and say, I'm, I'm going to reach them for Jesus Christ. You know, that's my goal. Because, the you know, darkness will overtake you. You don't, you don't commit sin to, to bring somebody out of sin. We don't Amen. go to the strip club Amen. To, to bring somebody to Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Amen. We got to realize we can't save anybody ourselves. It's the power of God. And we plant seeds of, of his word using wisdom, but Paul never compromised righteousness. In fact, that's why he got persecuted so badly because he called people out on their idolatry. He called people out in their error. He corrected them. They didn't want to hear it, but he still did it anyway. So, our, and, and Jesus said, think not that I come to bring peace, I come to bring a sword. You know, he came to give division in terms of righteousness and unrighteousness. We want to stick with what's right. And I also like what Apostle Raglan said about the Sabbath and about the law. You know, there's times we plant seeds with people. We, we don't beat them over the head with the law. We teach them what's right. The Holy Ghost opens the door, and God changes and opens their mind and their heart to receive the truth. Uh, so we just want to do it in wisdom. And Paul was so wise in his approach to so many people uh, as a servant. So looking at Christ, and this is kind of where we you wanted to start in John 13. Um, if we'll go there and look at Jesus as a servant, and then look at some of the things that happened around the Passover table, which are, to me, just astounding. Uh, but I'd like to go to John 13, if we could get a volunteer to read that that was in the lesson. Uh, 
All right, so you want to go to John 13, chapter 1 through 17? Yes, sir. All right, we will read that. So if you've got your Bibles, John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. All right, and if you've got, we're going to ask someone to mute, because I'm getting a little feedback. All right, John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And suffer being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he was come from God and went to God, he rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter. Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord. And ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Thank you, Dick and Preston. What a powerful passage. Amen. And I, I hope that you can appreciate that John 13 all the way up through the end of John is Passover. And that's one thing our chief apostle, Apostle Clark, has taught us that if you people want to take certain chapters or certain verses out of context in those chapters, and oftentimes people that are first day churches or other churches that don't observe Passover, they don't realize that John 13 all the way up through the end is Passover. Um, and it's even John 17, the prayer of Christ. But this is such a powerful passage to me. And to me, when I first, I, I can remember the first time I ever had my feet washed. It was so humbling. It's more humbling to me to have your feet washed than it is to wash feet. So we encourage you to wash feet, but also, and I want to hear the comments of others, but just thinking about the master, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, washing your feet, you know, and, and we're privileged to be able to wash each other's feet. Just what an example of servanthood. Servanthood. Is there any greater example that, that you can think of in, in terms of servanthood? Uh, Jesus, of course, we know he was the best example of a servant. He emptied himself. He came to earth in the form of a man and took upon him the form of a servant. You know, he was punished for the sins he never committed. But this passage to me, just to me, it just says servant. So vividly and so brightly. We're, we want to hear some comments. So, so Brother Hurst, I guess my question would be, as we look at this scripture, John chapter 13, and I'd love to hear from our apostle and our bishop, when we think about this, um, not even from a spiritual aspect, but the act of washing someone's feet. <laughs> Um, again, when we think about that, especially in this culture, they walk, um, they walk everywhere. It's not like they had cars and it was, it was from my understanding, just customary when, when you went to someone's home that they would actually wash your feet. But when Jesus does this, 
He does this from a standpoint of, I want to show you as my disciples. I'm taking on the, and the person who would wash the guest feet was typically the lowest servant in the household. And so the reality is what Jesus is saying, I'm only myself. I'm the creator of all things, but I'm only myself to give you such an example that I want to wash your feet. I'm demonstrating to you uh, beyond what I'm going to do when I get on the cross, I'm willing to humble myself to wash your feet. And he commands his disciples, you know, I want you to do this too so you understand the importance of being humble, the importance of modeling servanthood. And I think that's one of the things I take from this scripture, Brother Hurst. Uh, it's one thing to talk about being a servant. It's another thing to model it. Jesus does a great job of modeling what it means to be a servant. So that's my takeaway. I see Sister Simone has her hand up, and then I'm going to come to Apostle and Bishop Palmer. So, uh, Sister Simone, go right ahead. Okay, man, I just thought about the scripture that said, you know, to not think more of yourself than what you are, right? So our Savior, like you said, he has shown us the Word. He is the Word, amen? So he can't do anything outside of that Word. Praise God. And so when, you know, when we look at Christ, that is what we see. We see the word of God. And aren't we just, just let um, our superintendent, uh, our brother first, he definitely has to say it. He says that we are privileged to have all of the work in one place. Amen. And what a privilege. Uh, God has left himself uh, for us. And we can access it. Amen. We can access it by opening We can access it by calling on him. We can access it in prayer. We can access it in meditation. God has left no stone unturned. Amen. For us. There is nothing that he has not uh, shown us uh, how to do. Praise God. And he told us, he said, take this yoke upon you and follow me. If we will follow him, amen, we are going to end up, praise God, in the kingdom with him for eternity. But the key is to follow. And that's what Lady Thorne was saying last night. You have got to obey. Amen. You have got to obey. We, we don't want the new cart method. You know, <laughs> the new cart method. Right. Amen. Amen. We got the old cart. And it works. And it is well. And it will get you where you need to be. It will get you where you need to be. Amen. I, I love that point, Sister Simone, and I walked away from the message last night. Yeah. Don't take up the new car method. I said it. Lady right. Thornton brought that yeah. point home. I want us to think about this, and I see another hand up. Uh, you hear me say this all the time, and it's something that Chip Ingram says, more is caught than taught. And so Jesus did a great job of not only teaching, but they actually caught him doing things. They actually witnessed him doing things. So they caught him. They were in this moment, this very intimate moment with him where he took the time to wash their feet. So I imagine as John was on the island of Patmos and he could reflect on the experience that he had with Jesus, he could say the savior of the world took the time to wash my feet. Uh, I think to me, that's an amazing point. So we've got Sister Charmaine's hand up and then I want to go to Apostle and then I want to go to our Bishop Palmer for any thoughts they want to share on John chapter 13. God bless you, Sister Charmaine. So I just want to make sure I'm understanding um, the servanthood as it pertains to the lesson today. So I'm walking away, I guess based upon what I'm hearing today, and, and the scriptures that, I'm, that I've read is servanthood is more so the primary focus of servant is to carry out the will of God in the sense of telling mankind about him. Because Apostle James said that we address the physical things because a lot of times we serve to help people in need, those sort of things. But the scripture deals with us teaching others about Jesus. So is that, I wanna make sure I'm walking away with the right application that was intended with this lesson today. Amen, I'm gonna give that to the writer of the lesson, amen. Uh, your thoughts on taking it away from what Sister Charmaine said. 
I, I agree with what she's saying that we're, we're as servants desiring to fulfill the will of the master. We're, we're becoming obedient and subservient to the will of the master. You know, you think about just your normal everyday nine to five job, you know, we, we're certain rules and regulations. We're there on time. We do our best. You know, we're not insubordinate, you know, can't be insubordinate to God. You know, we want to tell God what, what he wants. We want him to do sometimes when we want him to do it. You know, we just got to be humble and, and fulfill the Lord's will uh, and submit ourselves to his rules, statutes, and judgments. I, I think she's spot on in, in terms of servanthood. Amen. Amen. I think the other thing, and you brought this out earlier, uh, Brother Hurst, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, one of the things I took away from verse 23 is Paul said, and this I do for the gospel's sake. And so his point was, this is about the gospel. So, so just, Sister Charmaine, I think you're spot on when I think about being a servant. While I want to do good things and I want to meet people's need, the reality is the greatest gift I can give them is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if we tie it back to, I think something that Lady Thornton said last night, uh, the man that was at the gate called Beautiful, they said, silver and gold have I none, but this is what I've got. <laughs> I've got Jesus. <laughs> and if you can get Jesus, you don't have to worry about begging for all. You've got Jesus, amen. I'm getting excited, so I want to get it to Brother Victor, and then we've got our brother OJ, and then we'll get it to our apostle and Bishop Palmer. So, uh, Brother Victor, good to see you. God bless you. Sabbath and thank, 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 thank you, Brother Horn. And uh, uh, you, you were, were elaborating earlier, and uh, and you mentioned something in the scripture that I always had for Pastor Raglan, and I never got around to asking him. And you touched up on it and almost answered my question, and that's in Matthew 10, 34 and 35. If you would just elaborate a little bit on those two scriptures. I think I'm happy down Pat, and you have really been a blessing to us today, and we thank God for you. Amen. You said Matthew 10? 10, 10, 34 and 35. 34, 35. When, when he said, I, I bring a sword. And so uh, if you just said that read on that for me, I, I'm happy down Pat, because you almost cleared up when you were talking. Amen. <laughs> Okay, I'm looking at Matthew 10, 34 and 35. It says, Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I am come, I come not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He, and this is kind of the key, I think, right here in understanding what he's saying. He says, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that finds his life shall lose it, and he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. So, you know, that's what Jesus is requiring of us. He, he's requiring us to lay down, lay everything else secondary, not to neglect our father and our mother, and not to neglect our families, but to love the Lord more than anything. Mm -hmm. That we're willing to keep God first. If it means that, you know, my family, if I got to forsake some of the things they do, my family in unrighteousness, I'm willing to do that to be a servant of God. Mm -hmm. All right? You know, I'll give you a personal example. For me, is I got a lot of family members that like to drink. They drink heavy. They drink a lot of alcohol. Mm -hmm. I choose not to participate. Mm -hmm. You know, I still see them once in a while, but they're, you know, the, the things that my family are known for, I don't want to be known for anymore. Right. So right. we got to keep things of God as a priority. Uh, and you've got to take up your cross. Whatever the Lord has called for us to do in this life, he sets us in his body as it pleases him. And your cross might be different than my cross, but, but the same cross is following the will of God in righteousness. Amen? So, you know, there's going to be things where there's not going to be peace uh, based on your stand for righteousness. Uh, and this is not advocating forsaking your family or you know, mistreating your family. It's just 
heavy and a priority. You love other things less than you love Jesus. And I hope that answers your question. It's a good Yes, sir. It certainly did, Brother Hurst, and I appreciate that. And I, I, I got it down pat now. So <laughs> thank, thank God for you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for the question, and Brother Hurst, thank you for the excellent answer. I see Brother O.J. Palmer's hand is up. Go right ahead, Brother O.J. O.J., you there? Yes. Can, can you all hear me? We got you. Okay. Um, I wanted to go back to John 13 um, really quickly. Uh -huh. um, I wanted to point out something that just kind of stuck out to me. You know, um, Jesus told Peter, you know, if I don't watch you, you have no part in me. And here's the amazing thing about this. You know, Jesus had already told them in John 13 and in John 15 that, listen, you're already clean through the word, right? So they were already clean. So it wasn't the act of Jesus washing their feet, but it was the act of then them uh, being humble, you know, the servant is not greater than his master. Right? We talked about the scripture earlier in Sabbath school, how though he were a son, yet he learned obedience through the things that he suffered, right? So it had nothing to do with them washing, Jesus washing their feet necessarily, but just the act of humility. If you can't humble yourself to, to help your neighbor and to help your brother, you have no part in me. You know, I look at uh, in, in Acts 2, after the gospel was preached, you know, they sold all their possessions and they had all things in common. They were willing to let go to serve one another. And that's what it's all about. So that's what I want to bring up. Yeah, Brother OJ, I love that point. I'm not going to let you go. I want to just ask, I want to ask you the question, why is that humility piece, and I love that you brought that out, why is that humility piece so important for a good servant? Because I, I, I forgot who uh, brought it out earlier, but you know, you're not thinking of yourself more highly than you ought. You know, going back to Hebrews, though he were a son, yet he learned the obedience through the things that he suffered. Your position does not exclude you from being able to serve. No. Christ was the son of God. We know that he was high and lifted up. No, you know, there was no other name given among men whereby we, he must, whereby we must be saved. But he took on the role as a servant and he was our greatest example. So your position your bloodline does not exclude you from serving. Amen. And we see that through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Great. <laughs> Amen. I love that point, Brother OJ. Thank you for that. Uh, I see some comments that uh, people are making. Our Minister Allen says the servant has to model selflessness. Yes. Yes. So they have to model selflessness. Yes. And then uh, the Joneses said uh, they have to lead by example. And Brother O.J., thank you for expounding on that and the scriptures that you gave. I want to hear from our Apostle Raglan and our, our Bishop Palmer. We're getting close to our end of our Sabbath school. Hey, man, it always goes by fast. But we definitely want to hear from the men of God. God bless you. Um, God bless you <clears throat> again, um, Brother Harris and David. Of Walter. Let me just say, back to St. John 13, this is one of those scriptures where history comes into play. If we don't understand the history of, of and, and, and Deacon Press, I think you touched on it earlier, of feet washing. First of all, Jesus is in a room full of men. And he's talking about washing feet. And as you pointed out earlier, feet washing was not a custom done by the men. Mm. This is a custom done by, by women. And when Jesus presented this, he's like, they're like, wow, what are you talking about? You're going to wash our feet? We don't do this. This is not something that, that is done by custom. And he, so he had to show them, you know, um, not just the history of it, but this is, a, this is where humility comes in. Don't think of yourself be so high that you can't humble yourself to perform this task that is usually performed by the lowliest servant in the house. Uh, like you, when, when they traveled um, by, by feet, usually they, uh, they walked where they went, and when they got to the house, first thing they did was, um, was, was wash your feet. And this was done by, by the women. Um, and you, we, we read that what, what qualifies a woman to be a widow indeed she had to perform certain tasks, had to house the saints and had to give a certain age, and she had to wash the saints' feet. And you know, and, and I, one thing I take note of, as, as some of our uh, women uh, in that church, 
age, one of the things we wanted to make sure that, and we watched one another feet doing Passover, but I just want to make sure, look, please do this. If you haven't done it all along, at least watch somebody feet <laughs> so you can fulfill that requirement. That's right. That's right. Amen. God bless you, Apostle. We see our Bishop Palmer. Any comments, thoughts as we begin to wrap up Sabbath school? We'd like, love to hear from you, Bishop Palmer. Yes. Um, I, I, I'm just grateful to uh, our brother Hirsch for uh, being with us in our state meeting and giving honor to all that, that are on and just listening to what has been said to those that have come before me. In regards to um, St. John the 13th chapter, my, my son, he pretty much just pulled my, my information, but that's, that's good. That, that's good to God be the glory. Amen. So when, when I look at the part that I want to address in regards to St. John the 13th chapter and not the other, it's already been addressed. Uh, the 15th verse says, for I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. And he, dis he distributed, or he showed that humility is, is, has already been said. He demonstrated humility. He de demonstrated a true servant. He is the suffering servant. Mm -hmm. that, that by his suffering, we all are made alive again. He said um, in the New King James Version, he said, Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master. Not is... Not it, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. I'm looking at this relationship that he demonstrates um, as his role as a servant because he's answering to his father. He's walking according to the will of the father. Jesus is God's Messiah to the whole world. He, he is the one that, that the Almighty has sent here to redeem us and to save us from the wrath to come. I mean, he is the peace. You know, Jesus is, is, is God's peace to everyone that believe him. That's who he is to us. So when in, in regards to um, um, Apostle um, Paul, and Apostle Ragnar said that, that, that meeting that Apostle Paul had on the road to Damascus made him that kind of servant. He was ordained for that before Ananias laid his hand on him. Right. I want to say to all of us, our salvation is in Christ. And it was given to us before the foundation of the world. We were appointed to be saved even before we accepted Christ. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yes, yes. Wow. We were ordained to eternal life while we were yet unbelievers. Amen. Is that powerful there? That's powerful. That's, that's God's foreknowledge. So when, when you do get saved, you're saved because you were ordained in the beginning to be saved. So when we start looking at the word appointed, it simply means ordained. So if God has appointed you to any position you were ordained by him and he allowed men to be in place to just acknowledge what he's already done. You, you know, so this, this, this is the greatness of God. But one thing that Jesus said, he, he said, if you know these things, mm -hmm. that's right. <laughs> the word happy means blessed. Mm -hmm. right. Having this kind of knowledge and understanding and doing what he has given us to do as his servant, he said, we are blessed. It goes back to the question that we asked at Digging Money, by being connected and servant to, you know, to this blessing. You're simply blessed because you know these things, as he said, that many of the prophets desire to look into these things that we see now, that we understand. We have a, you know, they prophesied it, they talked about it, but we, we are partakers of this great salvation. So the last scripture said, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. And he talks about, as Oscar has said, Junior said, in regards to the feet washing, um, these ritual cleansings, all of these things are good. Uh, Judas was, was, was there too probably, you know, and, and witnessed Christ from many different perspectives, but he, wasn't, he was not clean. Mm -hmm. If you wow. remember, Jesus told Peter, otherwise you all are already clean. Mm -hmm. 
You've already made whole. What made you whole? Because you're following me. You hear my word. It's God's word that makes it whole. So Jesus also lets us know, even in the feet washing, in regards to, you know, he is the living water. So we are washed through the water and the word. So I just give God praise today. Thank, I thank God for my space here and for all that's on here. Remember, before you came to believe, you were ordained to eternal life. Amen. You were appointed before you could believe. So don't give hope up on nobody. I don't care what kind of life they live in, like the life I was there. Don't give hope up on anyone because Christ didn't give hope up on anyone. His word will cleanse you. Appointed time Amen. means everything. God bless. Amen. Bishop Palmer, we, we love that. Amen. What a great way. Uh, for us to transition in our Sabbath school. Amen. We're going to ask you just this question, amen, because I know Evangelist Tara, I don't want her to get on me for us going over, but here's what I want you to do. Uh, in, in the chat, I want you to put in, how are you actively demonstrating servanthood in your life? We want to tie it back to our application. So as you think about, we want to be doers of the word. We want to model the behavior. We want to be the example. We are the city that sits on a hill. We give light to the world, amen, because we are truly the ambassadors of Christ. So if you can do that, begin to put those things in the chat. Um, but before we wrap up, I want to give our brother Hurst. All right, first of all, let's give him a Zoom round of applause, amen. He's done a wonderful job, amen. Brother Hurst, you're a blessing to the church. And I want to personally tell you, and I know everyone on this call knows that, but thank you for taking the time to write unbelievable lessons. Thank you for the time. This took you away from your own service, but we thank you for you engaging with us. And it's obvious that God is using you, directing you, that you have God in your life. And just know from us, sometimes we don't appreciate our own, but you are appreciated in the house of God. So with that, I'm going to give you the last word. And then from there, we will turn it into the hands of our evangelist tab. God bless you, Brother Hurst. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Preston. It's been an honor to be here. Truly, my prayer is in the writing of the lessons is that the Lord would allow me to speak what he would have to say out of his word for the building up the strengthening of his people amen so i ask that you pray for us pray for all of us that are on the committee amen pray that we would share god's word that his people would be strengthened that he would be glorified amen I, it's been an honor to be here i really have enjoyed all the participation in the comments it's just so powerful to share the word of god together amen i hope that you're excited about Sabbath school Amen. It's been a blessing to me the whole time I've been in the church. Amen. Amen. We just love the fellowship of breaking the bread of life Amen. together. Amen. Amen. Um, looking at the lesson today, I can say, honestly, the greatest title I can have given to me by God is servant. Amen. To call me Amen. his servant. Amen. The one that serves him, the one that wants to be a doer of his word Amen. and not a hearer only. Amen. Amen. And the one that sees him in peace when he says well done thou good and faithful servant amen that's what i want to hear amen, amen. And i, I amen. want to be a servant to my brothers and my sisters in the sabbath school in the church amen we're we're recruiting new members yeah. to the sabbath school we yeah. we want the sabbath school overflowing amen we want everybody to be a, a member of the sabbath school you know looking back at the lesson i, I it's astounding to me that in luke 22 this conversation that was after the feet washing, after the humbling uh, of having your washed feet, your feet washed by the master, by the Messiah, that the disciples could have this conversation of who of us is the greatest? You know, uh, well, I was on the Mount of Transfiguration. I, you know, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. I'm the, I'm the one that the disciple that Jesus, I just can't imagine what they were saying to each other, you know, and, and looking at that situation. Jesus had told them, he, he, leading up to that, he said, look, there's one of you that's sitting at the table that's going to betray me. And I think that's really what got the conversation going because they said, well, it's not me. I bet it's going to be you. You know, and then they said, well, nah, I, I'm the greatest. There ain't no way I'm going to betray you. You know, and you look at Peter, and, and, and Peter was such a, 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 I say, a character that we can learn a lot from. Amen. I'm sure he was actively involved in that conversation because the Lord had a few words to say to him after that. You know, uh, Peter, calm down a little bit, in other words. You know, so anyway, we don't want to be in that conversation to say who's the greatest. We want to 
be those that are called servants. And I'm privileged to be called a servant of the Most High God. Amen. The same who is forgiven much, loveth much. Amen. That's me. Amen. Amen. I hope that's you because I love the Lord today. He's been good to me. Amen. He's been good to each and every one of you. If you can sit down and count your blessings, they're, they're just innumerable. Amen. In terms of salvation, Bishop Palmer talked about it, how he, he chose us for the foundation of the world. We were chose to salvation. I'm glad to be in salvation. Amen. My life's never been the same since I got saved. Amen. Uh, we want to encourage you. <laughs> To continue to serve the Lord and continue to be servants. And as we get closer to this Passover season, we, we encourage you to read the scriptures, amen, and read the passages and, and the gospels leading up to Passover. And if you haven't done that and been moved to tears at some point in your life, then you got to go back and read it again, amen, because Jesus paid it all, and he didn't know it. He paid it for us. He paid what we owed, amen, who being the brightness of his glory amen. and the express image of his person. And upholding all things by the word of his power yeah. and by himself, by himself, purged our sins with his own blood. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Hope you have a, a, a joyous Passover season. We wish you the best in the rest of the state meeting. Amen. We love you. God bless you. We're going to go ahead and give you the hands of the Deacon Preston. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Brother Hurst. Thank you so much. And I'm just going to put it into the hands of our state's out of school superintendent, our evangelist, Cassandra Tab. God bless you, Lady Tab. Bless you. Bless you. One word. Did you enjoy Sabbath school this morning? <laughs> amen. Amen. We give God praise. Thank God for our Brother Hurst. Thank God for our Deacon Preston. Thank God for you being a part of Sabbath school by you engaging into Sabbath school. Our time is almost out, but I just want to say praise God. Amen. Thank God for Sabbath school. Thank you so much, Brother Hurst, for taking the time to elaborate on the word of God this morning. I want to say I took to away from this, I took away two words, humility and submission. Amen. As a servant, humility and submission, amen. And I read that scripture over in Philippians where it talked about Jesus. You know how he was fashioned after a man, but yet he humbled himself and came obedient to the cross. So that's what I take away from this lesson as being a servant, amen. We thank God for loving us so much that he left his word on record because his desire is us to become more and more like Jesus. So again, I thank each and every one of you all that was partakers of Sabbath school. Again, I thank our national super, Sabbath school superintendent and our deacon Preston for doing such a great job. Amen. Amen. Again, we say God bless you and continue to read God's word and continue to grow in the grace of the almighty God. At this time, we're going to turn the service into the hands of our state Sabbath school, um, state superintendent, Bishop Palmer. <laughs> yes, I'm here. All right, I, I didn't know which way to go, okay. Again, thank you for being a member of the Sabbath school. Praise the Lord, everyone. We thank God for another great Sabbath school lesson once again. We want to thank God for our facilitator today, uh, Brother Joshua Hirsch, and also co-facilitator, um, uh, Digging Preston. We want to give honor to all the pastors, all the ministry that's present, to all the families of God that are present, whether it's Zoom or Facebook Live, how, however you, you're viewing this lesson, we just thank God for a beautiful job by those that has presided over our Sabbath school. We thank God for all of those that have been placed behind the scenes that you can't see to make this possible, that we are able to go live, uh, Facebook Live, and also by way of Zoom, and those that are coming into the temple. I'm telling you, we have been getting good word this morning. We got great word last night, great this morning, and we're looking forward to continue to get this word. Amen. Praise God. 
Our service for this evening will start at 1 o'clock. We hope to be on time. We expect to be on time. Amen. Praise God that we may come forth. Amen. And bless the name of the Lord. Amen. We magnify him. Praise God for all that he's doing. We want to thank God for our state cyber school superintendent. Amen. Just have a beautiful job that she's doing uh, as presiding over our cyber school for our state. Thank God for all the local um, cyber school um, um, Superintendent as well, praise God. And we just bless that. We just pray that God will continue to bless you all to continue to serve in the capacity that you are in. Love it and enjoy it because you're doing a great job. That's from the national on down, district, state, all. To all be, all glory be unto God. At this time, we're going to get ready to have our prayer of dismissal and then we will see you back at 1 o'clock. Those that are in the temple, please stand as we will have our prayer of dismissal. Amen. Gracious Father, we thank you for allowing us to come before you at this present time. We thank you, Father, for being with us in the Sabbath school and for all of those that, that are witnessing um, your word, hearing your word. We pray, God, that you would cause the word that in being preached in all of our life, that we're not only be hearers of your word, but we will be doers of your word. Father, we ask you, Lord, as we be adjourned from this session but never from your presence that you would keep us and allow us to come back before you at 1 o'clock, Father, to see what you would do in our midst. Father, now we want to offer even uh, a prayer for those that are eating wherever they might be at, that you would bless the food that is being received for the nourishment of our bodies. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you. See you at 1 o'clock. Peace and blessings.